Well, William Herschel and his sister Caroline were engaged in mapping the sky. They would go out every evening and spend all night uh, looking at the sky, bands of, uh, of stars coming across the sky. Um, but in addition to that, they were both very interested in observing the sun. Uh, so William was trying to find ways of uh, filtering the sunlight, creating filters that would absorb this heat that he knew was coming from the sun. He could see the light, but the, there was a lot of heat coming along with sunlight as well. So he was doing experiments. And one of the experiments he did was to use a prism here, uh, like this, to take sunlight and project that sunlight onto a horizontal board on which he could, uh, and he could see the spectrum spread out on the board, a bit like these spectra I have here. And uh, what he did was to take uh, thermometers with blackened bulbs and put them at different parts of the spectrum in order to identify, try and identify where the heat was coming from. And uh, having another thermometer in the room to check that there were no changes in temperature in the room, he, he moved the thermometer all the way down the spectrum and uh, at one point, and in fact I think it was by accident, he put the thermometer bulb beyond what he could see of the red light. And when he wrote the numbers down, he realized that that actually was the hottest place in the spectrum. And uh, this was really when he realized that there was something more in the sunlight coming down that he could actually see with his eyes. And it was only later when he tried to figure out what it might be, uh, he thought it might be an extension of the radiation from the sun that actually went beyond the red end of the spectrum. So it was light that we couldn't see. And uh, it was really 80 years later that the importance of that discovery was realized. There is indeed light extending beyond the red end of the spectrum. And uh, uh, this it extended a long way beyond the red end and it also extended beyond the blue. So we were dealing with a, a whole range of phenomena spreading right the way from gamma rays in the ultraviolet, beyond the ultraviolet, all the way through to infrared radiation, radio radiation, and, and, and very long wavelength radio radiation. So if you look at this set of spectra here, this is a spectrum produced by a prism. You've all seen a prism. You can shine sunlight through the prism and project it onto a screen. Um, a prism spreads out the blue light much more than it spreads out the red light. So all the red light is cramped up together at this end of the spectrum. So he was actually getting more light on the bulb of his thermometer in the red than he was in the blue. So this was a confusing effect, but it was still a very, very strong effect. And he realized that when he moved the uh, bulb off the red end of the spectrum, he was still seeing light. Now this, spe this spectrum here was photographed with an ordinary visible camera. The spectrum below it, using the same prism, was exposed with a, a camera with infrared sen near infrared sensitivity. And you can see the extension, it looks rather pink here, you can see this extension in, into, the, into the red here, detected by the camera. The camera is no, not sensitive beyond this range, so we don't see further into the infrared. But you can see the infrared that uh, uh, William Herschel was detecting with his thermometer bulb here. Well, we have applications for um, both heating, uh, of course. The, the heating radiation, it should be pointed out, if we, if we look at a... Uh, the spectrum on the bottom here, this is a spectrum produced not by a prism, but by a, what we call a diffraction grating. It's another way of dispersing light into its constituent colors. Um, but the grating uh, disperses uniformly. And so you can see it spread more out into the red here. That's because the grating is spreading the light out uh, into a broader band. In order to get to the, um, the wavelengths of infrared light that we use for heating and thermal imaging, we have to go quite a long way out along this spectrum. It's a very natural form of heating because that, um, uh, that long wavelength infrared radiation does penetrate into the body and it can heat. You feel very comfortable when you're sitting around a campfire, for instance, and so it's that kind of heat. It's comforting heat. Um, uh, I think, I think that's, uh, that's important for people's feeling that you can feel the heat, you know, so you feel warm, so that's good. The heat that we get from the sun uh, is, comes from the visible radiation, which is very intense, interacting with the skin and making the skin warm, which then emits this longer wavelength 
infrared radiation. Some of it escapes and some of it gets transmitted into the body. Uh, so that's the, that's the interaction with the sun. When you build a heater that uh, emits longer wavelength infrared radiation, uh, um, like a campfire, uh, you receive directly that longer wavelength radiation which you feel as, as heat. So it's a direct way of receiving heat radiation. The sun, the solar radiation is indirect. The sun is actually very, very, very faint at those, at the, at the wavelength of the heat radiation. But it's the fact that it interacts with your clothes, it interacts with your skin, and it, it warms it up. And that warmth generates its own, like the heater, the warm, uh, the skin generates its own infrared radiation, which goes both ways, one out and one in.